All right, hello everyone. So on this day, Mars finally stations retrograde. Mars will be retrograde for the entirety of this year into the very beginning of 2021. So we wanna offer a few insights to take us into this journey. So first, whenever any planet begins to station retrograde, there's a very palpable experience of whatever that particular planetary function speaks to, it's stopping, it's slowing down, it's coming to a complete stop. So within our own consciousness, there's like that um, moment of pause before the next. And that can often feel very insecure. Mars in particular, which speaks to action, choice, direction, we're always moving towards the new experience. No day is like the last. It really does speak to this juncture where we're beginning to learn how to redirect our energies, our life force, in a way that is of more essence, that is of greater relevance and value. It's like with Mars, we can waste a lot of energy. We can use, I'm gonna move this here so that it doesn't pick up as much Ella. We can, um, we can use a lot of our energy towards all kinds of things. And when it comes down to it, there's the question of, is this what I wanna do with my life? You know, really our actions and our choices, when we look at it, honestly point to what we're wanting what we value, what we care most about. And so the, the nature of this moment, there can be a strong feeling of, of fear, anger, anxiety, tension, unresolved, and what Mars overwhelm. You can actually get very, you can almost get very worked up and then also very fatigued and very tired and burned out with the Mars energy. It burns itself. And so with whatever is present now, and whatever might feel complex or unresolved or unclear, the, the wisdom here in this particular transit is we are at a turning point and we are yet still learning how to be more masterful, how to be in greater agency with how we choose to act. What are we doing with our lives? Mars really does point to a quality of leadership, quality of self-leadership. You know, we're all the leaders of our own life. We all take responsibility for how we choose to respond to everything that arises, how we choose to initiate action and activity towards whatever we want, whatever we're trying to create here in this life. And um, ultimately, the, the will of this journey is to bring us into more awakeness, more life, more excitement, more joy, more enthusiasm about the gift that we get to share and we get to live, that we get to express. And with that comes a sense of empowerment and readiness. Like, I am ready to live my life. I am ready to do my work. I am ready to be a leader unto myself. And this doesn't mean I know where everything is going and what's gonna happen and where my life is leading me. But to be in this pause, you know, what really comes to me is to be in this pause and to be relaxed and to be composed, to be peaceful and not react to the unknown, not react to the fear. Because what does the immature Mars response do? It feels threatened, it feels fear, it feels the unknown. And so it reacts in that moment, like a child would react when it feels something unsafe. I don't like this, get it off. I don't like the way I'm feeling, I'm gonna react and scream. You know, Mars can really express as that unrefined adolescent energy. And so to stay, to stay quiet, Mars is coming to a complete standstill today. And then over the next week, it just slowly begins to build momentum. And as that happens, Jupiter will go direct and then Saturn, then Pluto, just over the next month. So this is a, a really important turning point in the in the craziness of 2020 and there's new direction new activity new growth new confidence and so that really i feel the medicine right now is to is to embrace inner stillness and not be reactive to let 
more wisdom and clarity and self-leadership be born from this particular time. You have anything to share? Of course. <laughs> ah. Everything um, that Ari said, I was just like dot, dot, dot. And for me, the big part of the anger and the reactivity that is inherent with Mars um, has to do with the will. And it also, it's interesting to me that Mars is in, in square to Saturn and Capricorn and that with Saturn retrograde, it's been a long period of that square. And then with Mars moving retrograde and Saturn moving direct, the square continues. So this, this ten dynamic tension between Mars and Saturn, the lesson for today in A Course in Miracles that Ari and I are working are, um, is let me not judge anything that, hap that occurs today. And I had this realization that the source of my anger often comes in the judgment that I have about what I perceive is happening in particular to the past. You know, if my perception of a person, a place, a thing, or an event is colored in the view of what has happened in the past, what I see from the past, my past experiences, you know, um, we recently had an experience where something very triggering came up and it was from my past. It was one of those like original childhood wounds. Um, and here it was coming up in the present moment related to something completely different and creating a trigger that was like in the Mars effect so strong, overwhelmingly strong. And in the perception of that particular time, I could see what was happening um, only through the lens of my anger, which has to do with my judgment, which has to do with the way that I am perceiving that moment. And if I'm only perceiving through the past, then I'm not actually seeing what's happening now. And just stopping, you know, with the effort, like in this retrograde moment, with the effort to not perceive anything with judgment, to not judge. I don't know what anything is for. That's like my best 2020 equals, I don't know what anything is for. But then to remove my judgment from what's happening right now means that automatically the anger that would come up is diffused because I can't actually see um, through the eyes of anger. And in that respect, it's like a re-harnessing of my own internal creative energy um, back to a place of neutrality, back to a place of being willing and open to see differently. Um, so I feel like that it's so useful that this is the lesson for today as Mars is stationing retrograde is where like in this moment of stopping, um, how powerful it is to just practice not holding judgment on what's occurring, you know, and just to take it. Um, I've always wondered how Byron Katie got divorced, you know, <laughs> because it was like that experience of getting divorced is often seen as such like a combative thing. And I perceive that Byron Katie and in my experience, having met her, she lives with such peace. And in part, it's because she has this consistent practice of not judging anything. And so she's not perceiving what's happening in the world as an attack against her. She's perceiving it as, you know, as the divine is, would, you know, see. And that's been such a healing process for me to 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 begin to release my judgments and realize how much of what I'm seeing is related to the past. Um, and then actually like I felt, I felt in that moment where I acknowledged that part of myself that was triggered and, and really allowed that judgment to kind of fill and expand and, and dissolve. I actually felt like love burst in the center of my being and all this emotion release like the tension of holding those judgments was taking up so much of my energy and as soon as that happened i actually slept 
with mm. rest and, and relaxation and without trigger remaining in my body. And it was really um, just a powerful teaching for me. So I offer that as, as it's so easy with the Mars energy to, um, to direct the will into action. It's really a desire to release the energy. Um, and as Mars is retrograde, my experience is that becomes even more internalized and beautiful. Um, with Mars, we want to know that we're free. We want to know that we're actually um, able to act, that we can live our life. And we, if we perceive in any moment that we're not free, if we fear that our need and right to make a choice, to do what's needed, to act, is somehow being limited or blocked, then we can very much get angry, we can be enraging. And that's why this, this practice of knowing our own responses and really becoming curious about our own perceptions. If we're not judging what's happening and we don't have such a conviction that we know what everything is for, that we know what this means and what this is supposed to look like, it actually frees us up so much more. Something I've been learning, um, you know, there's almost like that ongoing question of when, when, when will we get more sleep? When will we, you know? And, and it's interesting because I can become very attached to the actual idea of like more hours of sleep. But similar to what you just shared, when I'm at peace with the present moment and I feel free and I feel um, unclouded by anger or judgment or fear. You know, in Mars, Mars is fear obviously anger and swearing Saturn judgment anger fear they all get they all get intermixed with each other when I'm unclouded with that there can be this you know maybe only getting a few hours but actually feeling rested inside and then it's almost like I realize oh I'm the one that makes me tired like it's it's almost like um an injury on top of an injury Maybe I didn't get a lot of sleep, but then when my mind isn't at rest, I create fatigue with my thoughts and my perceptions, my reactions, and then I'll probably eat not as well. And, but if there's physical tired, but a sense of peace in my heart, it actually brings out more tenderness and more suppleness, and more slowness. And I could feel almost as if the, the day is just sort of unfolding moment to moment. And there isn't, um, there isn't um, some sort of struggle with a lot of work to do and a lot of things that need to get done. It's all just sort of held in love and safety. And with Mars, we can have that constant experience of rushing and always somewhere to go. And that is very exhausting. But with more peace in our hearts, I find that um, even a full day, such as today, it doesn't necessarily feel full on the inside. And I think that's a really precious um, and really valuable place to be. And this journey is, um, you know, it's really culminating in the end of this whole year. Um, so this particular time is very, very precious to come into contact with a new way of relating to our own energy and our own will um ultimately finding our way towards more unity and more harmony mm -hmm. in the world so. mm -hmm. one one other thought that arises is we um we always learn that we we give ourselves what we give to others and so with mars moving retrograde now the prayer and really the blessing and the, the practice um, it's to know that the way that we're moving through life, the way that we're directing our attention towards the people, places, and things, it's always going to be what we're giving to ourselves. And the, the, the mental trick is we keep on thinking we're, we're giving it to the outside, you know, just rushing to get there or doing the next thing or got to finish this or I just got to deal with this problem or react to this person or spill my water and make everything wet. Um, but really, it's, it's actually happening inside. And so we create a lot. Mars, it's interesting because Mars is movement and it's 
I always I always speak about it as a self cleaning oven because Mars is inherently about sort of breaking the status quo, mm. moving forward in life, um, doing something new. It's like new moment. It's it's separating from everything's okay right now. It's action, and you have to walk this path. You have to take the actions that you need to take. And through taking action, there's an exhaustion process that occurs where the need to act itself narrows and refines. And thus within the Mars archetype, there's always an ongoing point of inquiry around what action is actually necessary and how am I really needing to act? How am I needing to do this? How am I needing to respond? Because so much of the Mars energy is actually we do what we feel we need to do, but then it's like, we don't necessarily have to do it that way again. It's an exhaustion process. So this really does accelerate. All retrogrades, I feel, accelerate evolutionary growth. Because it does internalize that function. It does bring us more deeply into ourself. So acting with so much more peace and agency and um, self-trust. 